afternoon. You'll be briefed by Vice Chairman of the NTSB, Bruce Landsberg, L-A-N-D-S-B-E-R-G. Miami Air International Flight 293 uh, was inbound from uh, Guantanamo Bay and landed here at uh, uh, Navy Air Station Jacksonville uh, at about 9.49 last evening. There were 135 people on board uh, and seven crew members. The aircraft overran uh, the runway, that would be runway 11, which is an easterly alignment. Everybody survived with some uh, few minor injuries. The aircraft departed the right side of the runway at the far end and impacted a low seawall which was made of uh, uh, loose stones and rocks and stopped in the shallow rivers of the St. John River. Can you explain how that process works? This is important. We have recovered the flight data recorder. That um, uh, has the ability to record over 1,000 parameters and that'll give us the airspeed, position of flight controls, the altitude, the point of touchdown, and uh, many, many things relative to what the aircraft was doing and, and so forth. That uh, flight data recorder is right now on its way to the NTSB laboratory in Washington, D.C., and it was undamaged, so we expect to get a very full report on that shortly. Um, our first response, our first priority was obviously human life. So that was our immediate focus, was getting the people to safety. When I arrived on scene, uh, most of the passengers had been uh, taken off the airplane and were ashore. Uh, and then I had, I, had, I had learned that there were pets aboard the aircraft and my heart immediately sank because I'm a pet owner myself um, and cannot imagine what the, pet, the, the, the pet owners were going through. Our second priority, once we knew that the, the, that the our passengers were safe. Our second priority was to try to attempt to determine uh, what the status of the pets. Um, initial uh, fire or initial uh, responders uh, did look inside the cargo uh, cargo bay. Uh, they did not see anything. They did not hear any any animal noises. They could not see any crates. Uh, so at that point, as well as for their, their own safety and not knowing if the aircraft could potentially. Uh, sink and risk their lives, they, they backed out. Now, as the evening progressed uh, a little bit and we got some additional actions done, uh, I asked the first responders to again to go back and make an assessment. Um, and they did. They went in, they, they, they could look in from the cargo bay door. Uh, we asked them to specifically look for uh, you know, pet carriers and they could not see any pet carriers that were above the water line. So uh, we do obviously do not have confirmation, um, but uh, uh, we are continuing to do what we can to, to positively determine the status of the pets. In terms of, the, in terms of length, 9,000 feet is not challenging for this, this uh, airplane. As I saw them coming off the plane and, and being escorted onto the airfield, uh, everyone was very uh, cordial and there wasn't any uh, um, commotion or any kind of panic. Everybody was very calm. When I spoke with the passengers uh, in the evening, later in the evening, uh, they were obviously, um, you know, they were tired, they were wet, they wanted to just get into bed and get a change of clothes, but they are all, uh, you know, very, um, you know, respectful and uh, cooperative, uh, and, and they were patient with us. And we really appreciate it. with the response? Yes. So I know, um, obviously, initial reports, there's lots of confusion in terms of numbers, and those numbers changed. Some people left, some passengers left the scene, later came back uh, wanting to seek uh, uh, treatment or to be looked at. So that's why sometimes, that's why some of those numbers change. But in total, right now we've, uh, uh, 41, people were to 41 people were transported. Now that number is high from the standpoint that of those 19 were family members or friends that were escorting the passenger they knew, you know, to the, uh, either the local hospital here on base or out in town. So 22 passengers 22 people sought medical attention. Uh, only one uh, uh, person was hospitalized. It was a, a dependent, uh, three-month-old child. It was uh, the child was um, admitted to the hospital as a precaution for observation overnight. And last I checked this afternoon, the child was to be released. 
at the crash site, uh, there was some uh, leaking of uh, jet fuel, and the uh, Coast Guard, as I understand it, has installed some booms around that to contain the, uh, the jet fuel uh, there. Uh, I was uh, uh, out there uh, here this afternoon, and you can smell the jet fuel, but it seems to be well contained. They laid out uh, a couple of booms, so uh, I think that, uh, that works pretty well. One more question.